Hey guys, so today I am going to quickly go through my Mirabilia collection. This was requested and I am happy to do it, but the caveat is I have 27 Mirabilias, um, 30 if you count the three that I've already finished that I won't be showing here. So if you think that's excessive and you have some sort of negative opinion about that, then this is the video that you shouldn't watch. This one is not for you. <laughs> but for everyone else, I'm going to be going through the Miravillias that I have. But first, um, I am trolling you with my lipstick now. Uh, in my last set of videos, there was a pretty big response to the lip I was wearing. Uh, so I chose to wear something even darker and bolder today. Um, this is the NYX Liquid Suede Cream Lipstick in Vintage. It's the best. This is my favorite kind of color. I wish I could wear it more. I'm glad you like it. All right, so I have ordered all of my Mirabilia's from oldest to newest, and yeah, I guess I could say something first about how this is the one group of, group of? Um, this is the one designer I can see myself collecting. This is far and away the most uh, patterns I have from any one designer. Um, but I don't think I'm going to become like a super, super collector because I went through um, all of the Mirabilia's and there are quite a few that I, I am genuinely not interested in. <laughs> um, they're still beautiful, but just they're ones that I don't think I'll ever stitch. Um, the, like a lot of the ones with kids in them, like the Giggles in the Snow, etc. Not for me. Um, the, like the Patriotic American ladies. Not for me, obviously. Um, the Santas, while I think they're beautiful, I don't think I'll ever see myself stitching one of those. So just the fact that like I'm not interested in every one of them means that I don't need to have every one of them. I don't need to collect. It like flips that switch off in my brain. Um, having said that, if they were all like these ones, like if they just followed a really clear template of like pretty lady doing this, pretty lady doing this, I probably would have to buy them all. But um, I guess I'll read the back, the little blurb on the back, as I show them, just to give me something to do while you look at it. Some of them don't have them though. Um, this first one doesn't. The first one I have is Mirabilia number no. five. It's Sleeping Beauty. I did not know this one was so old, but there you have it. So that's Sleeping Beauty. The next one I have is number seven, Fairy Flora. The next one I have is number 10, which is Elizabeth and the Lavender Sky. The next one I have is number 14, English Roses. I love this one. Okay, I have to move my light or I'm gonna burn my hand on it. This one is so striking, I think. That's English Roses. The next one I have is number 17, Stone Roses. Another really interesting one. I really enjoyed seeing kind of the progression of the designs. So that's Stone Roses. This one, okay. This next one I have is I think, objectively, the most beautiful one I own. I like it more than I like Garden Party. I like it more, than, I don't know, I just, there's something about it and I haven't stitched it. I'm just going by the photo on the front, but this is the most stunning one, I think, in the entire collection. It's number 18, Blooming Bride. Like, you could stitch that on any fabric you wanted. I think it uses four skeins of white, and then there's all of these beautiful, like, flower accents. And it has all the things I like. It has a strong border. I just, yeah, this one is, I think, my favorite. That's Blooming Bride. Next I have number 20, which is Fairy Tales. It says, Once Upon a Time. 
Next I have number 21, which is Fairy Idol. I really like this one too. Anything that incorporates the actual design as kind of a border for itself, I'm really into that. This is the first one I have that has some writing on the back. <laughs> this is number 22, Summer Queen. The stunning companion to Winter Queen, the Summer Queen also commands admiration all on her own. From the top of her golden chignon, to the tip of her graceful riding plume, to the hem of her heavy satin Tiffany blue gown, she is a symbol of all that is glorious and perfect, just like summer. Points for me for pronouncing chignon correctly. That came out of nowhere. Um, number 23 is Rose Celebration. Next I have uh, number 30. This is another one of my absolute favorites. A lot of the ones I like are like ladies on branches. <laughs> I'm stitching Lily of the Woods right now and uh, that's a lady on a branch. This is also a lady on a branch. This is a Midsummer Night's Fairy. Behold, tis but a fair wood sprite perched upon a mossy branch in the misty gloaming, gloaming? of a Midsummer's Eve, from her periwinkle gown to her sweeping satin purple hem to the iridescent span of her swallow-tailed wings, she's scarce bigger than a lightning bug. But lest she fool you by her tiny size, remember well her magical powers. Save the stitching of her enchanted glowing wand for last and watch as she casts her mythical, mystical spell over all who pass close by. Wow. Wow, Nor Corbett. That is quite the book. Um, yeah, part of the reason I like this one so much is all the beading in her wings. I think it makes them look so beautiful and like shimmery and semi-transparent. Uh, the next one I have is number 38, Titania, Queen of the Fairies. The companion to Nora Corbett's 1997 A Midsummer Night's Fairy, Titania harks from the same enchanted misted wood. Resplendent in a simple rosebud crown and a pair of golden, gauzy, gorgeous wings, she perches upon a tiny limb and offers these words from Shakespeare to all her lovingly stitch her sumptuous rose and coral gown. Hand in hand with fairy grace, we will sing and bless this place. The next one is number 41, and it's Adia, Adia, the garden fairy. If you venture quietly into the woods at the golden hours of dawn, you may catch a glimpse of this benevolent fairy as she sows the sweet-smelling earth with cobweb strands of morning dew and the rarest of flower seeds. The handmaiden to Titania, queen of the fairies, this little nymph looks beautiful with or without her wings. Oh, interesting. Place her in a garden room or give her someone who loves watching seeds turn in, or give her to someone who loves watching seeds turn into something beautiful. This one again, just has a ton of beadwork. Man, these are like novels. I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, the next one I have is number 44, The Garden Muses. I also really like this one. According to Greek mythology, muses are the ageless spirits who inspire and watch over us as we create. What better place for muses to reside than in a cool green topiary garden? At the entrance to Nora Corbett's classic retreat, Antique urns drip with moss, wrought iron gates beckon visitors inside, and all who enter are promised a quiet place of peace and inspiration. Next is number 46, Le Nouveau Sampler. This is a little different. That's the reason I like it. On a recent trip to Paris, Mirabilia's designer Nora Corbett was inspired to create a cross-stitch sampler unlike any other. The focal point of the sampler is the stately facade of the famous Le Belvedere Mansion. Below is a portrait of the Lady of the Manor, as imagined by Nora. The next one I have is number 48, Rose Arbor. Nora Corbett's The Rose of Sharon cross-stitch design has become an enduring favorite among Mirabilia design collectors. Nora's newest masterpiece called Rose Arbor is a mirror image of the earlier design reflecting another beautiful woman beneath an arch entwined with full-blown roses. 
We think the appeal of both designs lies in the exquisite gowns, the elegant lines, the lavish details, and the romantic sense of style. We also think, why doesn't anyone make dresses like these anymore? Because they weigh a million pounds and you have to wear a girdle under them. <laughs> um, Rose of Sharon is one that I've considered buying. The thing that stops me is there's only f roses on one side of the pillar of the Rose of Sharon, and I know that for me I would have to like, I'd have to put them on both sides, and that just seems like too much work. So I don't have that one. Um, the next one I have is number 49, Gathering Eggs. This is pretty much the only one that has like a child in it <laughs> that I really like, and it's because of the colors. It's just this awesome, this awesome like contrast of colors, and I love that border. This reminds me a lot of um, Via Mirabilia or Villa Mirabilia, just the color contrast. I love that one. I don't have it. I'm so jealous. Everybody stop showing it. <laughs> but this is Gathering Eggs. The next one I have is number 57, The Queen Mermaid. The Queen Mermaid swishes through the waves, glittering in the ocean light. She is a figure of fairy tale, but seems quite real in her watery world. Not to be bought, only to be made by you, with the hand and from the heart. The next one I have is number 67, The Woodland Fairy, another beautiful lady on a branch. This beautiful fairy with a radiant wand is dressed in shades of pale gold and persimmon pink with fluttering misty blue wings. Entwined with gleaming leaves, she is perched on a mossy branch. Stitch this magical nymph and imagine flights of fancy. Very similar to Lily of the Woods, actually, which I'm working on right now. The colors are a little bit different, but reminds me of her. The next one I have is number 69, Cinderella. She made her escape as lightly as a deer. The prince followed, but could not catch her. Only she dropped one of her glass slippers, which he picked up and treasured. This beautiful maid, mate to our Sleeping Beauty pattern will add a romantic touch to any room. Strong border, again, you know I love that. Not, the, not this one, this one, obviously. The next one I have is number 71, Shimmering Mermaid. Floating on the linen with a gleaming lock and key attached by a bead chain, the shimmering, dreaming beauty is one of Nora's most romantic mermaids. The exquisite scale pattern and airy fins make this the perfect project to be admired by young and old. And that's all true, but again, you know that I love that border. <laughs> um, the next one I have is number 109, big old jump in numbers, um, Tree of Hope. Serene maidens harvest wishes from the tree with a lotus heart amidst intertwining leaves. Lovely whimsical dream flowers inspired by the arts and crafts movement fill the garden. Stitch your, hope into, stitch your hopes into this tree and watch them grow true. Uh, the next one I have is number 110, Spring Topiary Garden. Love this one again, border. A pair of butterfly winged damsels oversee an early spring garden. The garden wears a gown of green and her overflowing urns are crowned with filigree gates and trellises. It's lace made up of fresh sprouts and ribboned with perfectly trimmed boxwood. The jewels are the sparkling first flush of lavender, clover, and lady slipper. The hem is made of mossy covered columns and the buttons are shiny stepping stones. That is a strong analogy executed very thoroughly. <laughs> Um, the next one I have is number 114, September Sapphire Fairy. These, I used to think that I didn't like any of them. There's 12, um, one for each birthstone. And it turns out that I, I already own two of them. I just finished August Peridot Fairy, and this one is the other one I have, September Sapphire Fairy. But I am so bothered by the fact that I don't like mine, which is the Topaz one. Um, that one bugs me. I wish I wish I liked it more, but I don't. Uh, so September Sapphire Fairy. The September Sapphire Fairy captures a serene movement of a young fairy. She is inspired by beautiful prints and kimonos of the Far East, and butterflies dance about her lovely silk brocade gown. She is a sweetheart that lingers in the amazement of her fluttery friends. The 
Next I have number 115, Lady Alexandra. Classic, pretty lady, no mermaid, no wings, no nothing. This design is Midnight Velvet, White Star Silk, Hollywood Glamour, Glittering Diamonds, and Brocade. A timeless design of beauty and grace, please meet Miss Lady Alexandra. Lots of gold. I must have a thing for gold. Lots of, lots of gold ones. Um, the next one I have is number 137, which is Moonflowers. There was once a little girl who wanted nothing more in this world than her very own fairy, so her grandmother, who loved to garden, whispered a secret. That explains this even less. So is she actually a girl sleeping in the moon? Is this her fairy watching over her, but who doesn't have wings? I don't know. She's beautiful, though. <laughs> And the last one I have, which you all know very well, is number 140, The Garden Party. You are cordially invited to moments at dusk between friends under silk lanterns. And those are all the Mirabilias I have that I have not stitched. I also own Red, Mermaid of Atlantis, and August Peridot Fairy, all of which are finished. I will link finished videos for those um, up here in the card if you want to see those more closely. And yeah, that's it. I think I've hit maximum maximum mirabilia. Now if I go through the list, there aren't any that jump out at me outrageously that I like have to have. Um, there are a couple that I would like, but the rarer ones, I just am not willing to pay more than like a typical list price. I'm actually bidding on one right now on eBay um, and I'll probably lose because I'm a terrible <laughs> eBayer, but I think the maximum I'm willing to pay is like 25 Canadian dollars. <laughs> but I mean, if you think about it, so a typical um, Mirabilia pattern on 123 stitch is what, 13, 59? Let's say they're anywhere from 12 to 15 dollars. In Canadian, like, a one, two, three stitch Mirabilia is like $18 Canadian. Let's say 20. Let's say they're $20 each in Canada. That's a kind of a lot. Yeah, and so I'm not willing to pay for the, like I really like some of the rare ones. I really like Seaside Kingdom. I really like that Villa Mirabilia. There are a couple I really, really like, but I just, I don't know how much, how much money I'm willing to put into just owning that pattern. Um, for the record, uh, I order most of my Mirabilias. I used to order most of them from 123 Stitch, and I feel like a lot of them were just kind of re released, or there seemed to be like a surge in the market because a couple of those, like Fairy Flora and like a couple of the older ones that aren't out of print, seem to show up everywhere all at once. So I don't know what happened there, but you can find a lot of those, these ones that I showed on 123 Stitch. The other place I've been ordering from for my Mirabilias is crossstitchworld.com. It's an eBay site. That's where I originally placed my first order. Um, they just have a lot, a lot of Mirabilia selection. They combine shipping. Shipping is pretty cheap to Canada, which is a big deal for me too. Um, I refuse to pay like exorbitant shipping, which is why I basically stay away from American eBay because it's just, it's too, it gets too ridiculous between the exchange and the shipping. Um, but crossstitchworld.com has a ton of Mirabilias. I've ordered through their eBay site and also through their main site, which is crossstitchworld.com. And I would highly recommend them. And if you're interested in a couple of these older ones, they are on there for a really good price. Like if you like um, Gathering Eggs or Fairy Flora or The Kiss, which I don't have, it's, the, it's a really early Mirabilia of like the man and the woman and he's kissing her neck. Um, they have it for like $11. American. So I will link that website down below if you're interested in doing a little Mirabilia shopping. Let me know which ones you liked. Which ones do you want me to see me do next? Um, that Blooming Bride I think is my favorite one of all time. I don't have that kitted though, um, but I do have like a, more than I would care to admit of these kitted up. So let me know what you think and I will see you guys in the next one.